Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Nikki B Axe TV and welcome back to another video. And today it's going to be a little different. I'm going to share my personal experience with you on a subject matter that um, is talked about a lot but often swept under the rug. And I'm going to share my experience. I hope you can take away from it. And I hope you can share this information with the women in your family. But before we get into it, if you are new to this channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. Be sure to bang on that subscribe, like this video, and leave your comments down below. And if you are a returning subscriber, thanks for coming back and watching my videos. I appreciate each and every one of you. And with that being said, let's get into the story time. So let's set the scene. It was 2009. It was a beautiful Monday morning. The sun was shining. Um, as you all know, I have two kids and at the time they were small. So my son was in preschool and my daughter, I believe she was in kindergarten. So my husband was getting ready for work. I was in school, so I was getting the kids ready to send them off. And then I was heading to class myself. So I'm heading to class. I'm on the highway, you know, typical morning for me. And then all of a sudden I'm driving and out of the blue, I felt weird. I had a sensation like from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. It felt like adrenaline rushing through my body. And then my heart began to pound out of my chest. So I immediately got off at the next exit. I pulled over at a gas station. And by this time, my heart was racing out of my chest. I was trembling. And so I called 911. And as I'm sitting there waiting for them to come, I'm literally thinking that I'm gonna die. Like it felt like I was dying. I'm like, what? the hell is going on? What is going on with me? So they finally get there, thank God, because I'm, at this point, I'm like freaking out, you know? So they come, they hook you up to the monitors, they um, they look at your heart rate, it was beating, I believe, 160 beats per minute, normal is 60 to 100. My blood pressure was through the roof, and that was because, you know, whatever was happening with my body, and of course, at that time, you begin to panic because you don't know what's happening. So it's natural for your blood pressure to be high in a situation like that. And they checked my respirations, my pulse, just everything was just out of whack. So they then proceed to tell me, um, well, to ask me if I want to go to the emergency room. And I didn't want to go, but I didn't know what was happening. So I said, well, can I just sit here for a minute? Can we just see if everything kind of calms down? And they were so nice and so kind that they did that. They really helped me um, get through that situation in that moment. And my heart rate began to come down. Um, they rechecked all of my vitals. Everything was within normal limits. So I said, I'm okay. I didn't really want to go to the ER. So I continued to go to class. Got to school. You know, I'm sitting in class. And all of a sudden, my heart begins to beat a little funny, it kind of felt a little irregular. And then it began to race. So, um, by the way, I was in nursing school. Um, no, I'm not a nurse, but I did go to nursing school and then I switched my major, but that's a whole nother video. So I was in nursing school. So one of my instructors, you know, she checked my, my heart rate and it was 100 and. 50 ish beats per minute so it was still pretty high and at that moment i explained to her what previously happened to me so she suggested that i do go to the er just to get checked out being that this is the second incident in the same day so i agree the ambulance come they hook you up to the monitors they did the whole shebang and they took me to the er so at this point in my mind i'm really thinking i'm gonna die I'm dying. What is happening to my body? So I called my husband, told him to meet me at the hospital. I called my mom. I told her to please get the kids off the bus, explain to her what was going on with me. So we get to the hospital and they do the whole cardio workup. They do blood tests. Every single test that they ran on me came back negative. The doctor said, according to your results, you are healthy. We don't find anything that's pathologically wrong with you that's causing these symptoms 
Um, so he asked me, were you stressed? Maybe you had an anxiety attack. Maybe it was a panic attack. But at this time, we cannot find, um, we can't give you a diagnosis. So I'm like, okay, that's a good and a bad thing because I still don't know what happened. So they discharged me, um, proceed to go home. You know, I'm thinking this is a weird day. Don't know what happened, but I'm grateful and I'm thankful that all of my tests, all of my test results came back negative and that I'm, I'm healthy. So that was a good thing, but still don't know what happened, right? So the next day, begin my normal routine, kids off to school, husband goes to work, I'm heading to class. So I'm on the highway and I'm driving to class and I begin to feel really lightheaded and really dizzy, not feeling like myself at all. I kind of felt like I was in a dreamlike state, you know, kind of like you're looking out of a fishbowl, really weird, really unexplainable. Um, so again, I pulled over at a gas station to kind of collect myself, to pull myself together, just felt kind of out of it and just off. So that kind of subsided and I went to class, you know, continued my day. So for the rest of that week, I had similar incidents. And within that week, I probably went to the emergency room about five times and it always ended up the same way. All of my test results continued to be negative, didn't find anything wrong with me and me walking out discharged with my discharge papers. So at this point, I'm at week two, and I'm not feeling any better. I didn't think it was smart to continue to go to school and keep missing class because of these incidents. So I temporarily withdrew from school so I can focus on myself and trying to heal from whatever it was that my body was going through. So now we are at week three. I temporarily withdrew from school. I took a leave of absence from work. And my Monday starts off as a typical Monday. I take the kids to school. Husband goes to work, come back home. And I'm sitting in my living room thinking, what is wrong with me? The doctors can't find anything. I probably went through four physicians just to get different opinions, and each and every one of them told me the same thing, that they can't find anything wrong with me, I'm healthy. I had probably three cardio workups from different physicians. They told me my heart is perfectly healthy. They cannot find anything, again, pathologically wrong with me that's causing these symptoms. So I began to take matters into my own hands. So every day after taking the kids to school, husband goes to work, I would get on the internet. I would Google every little thing that I thought would give me some type of answer as to why I'm feeling like this. Googling all of my symptoms. And by this time, my symptoms were tackiness, you know, which was the fast heart rate. Like I could literally be sitting watching TV just like I was in class, in my heart, I can feel it start to elevate. So I had the fast heart rate, lightheadedness, feeling dizzy, feeling um, a little out of it, like in a dreamlike state, sensitivity to the light, um, and just feeling some days feeling really down in the dumps. Not really depression, but just a little like off, you know, like not my normal, usual, cheerful self. So these are the symptoms that I was experiencing. So I will Google my symptoms, hoping to find some type of explanation as to why I'm feeling this way. And at this point, I began to feel hopeless because I've seen so many physicians and since they couldn't find anything wrong with me, they write you off as like it's psychological and they want to give you referrals to go see a psychologist. They said, maybe you're having anxiety attacks. Maybe you're having panic attacks. We can't find anything wrong with you. So I felt super helpless and super hopeless. So, you know, before I started doing my own research, I just want to back up a bit. I said, okay, this is what it is. Since they can't find anything physically wrong with me, I'm having anxiety attacks. These are panic attacks. This is what it is. But I didn't know the root cause of it. You know, when you're having panic attacks and anxiety attacks, there's usually 
a root cause. It could be stress. It could be a significant change in your lifestyle or a significant event that happened. Um, so I couldn't really pinpoint why I was having these quote unquote anxiety attacks. So I didn't feel right just settling for that diagnosis. So I continued to do my own research and be my own advocate um, to my own health. So back to me Googling, I Googled um, for many, 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 many days. I mean, by this point, we're probably like months in, maybe like three months in with no change, you know, just going through life saying this is how my life is going to be for the rest of my life. And I began to feel kind of down about it. And I wasn't comfortable, like I said, with that diagnosis because I didn't believe that um, what these doctors were telling me was correct. I believe it was something more. So like I said, I began doing my own research. Um, Dr. Google became my best friend. There was so much information that I was finding out. Um, but what confirmed the information was one day when I came across this link and I clicked on the link and it brought me to a website where there were so many women. It was a support group and it was so many women women that were experiencing the same symptoms that I was experiencing. Like I felt like I could have wrote those testimonies myself. And these women, they weren't getting any help from their physicians. And the name of this support group was Yaz Birth Control Pills. And when I sat there and when I thought back as to when these symptoms started happening, like what did I do differently in my life? And that was the one thing that I did differently. I began taking birth control pills. And not only did I begin taking birth control pills, I was taking that specific brand of birth control pills. So when I came across this support group, I felt really relieved. I felt like I was finally going to get the answers that I've been searching for because there were women and people out there feeling exactly how I've been feeling. And when I read some of these testimonies in this support group, I felt like I could have wrote them myself. A lot of these testimonies were really difficult to read. Some some were from mothers who had daughters that were taking this birth control pills and unfortunately their outcome was fatal. I remember reading a story about or a testimony about um a mother who said that her daughter was 19 years old and had a massive heart attack from taking this pill. Another lady said that her niece suffered um, a CVA, a stroke at the age of 22 and never healed from it. Her life, you know, is completely changed because of this. And there were just many, 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 many more stories um, that were similar to those testimonies. A lot of women developed anxiety and disorders, panic disorders, agoraphobia, all type of psychological disorders because of this pill. So at this point, the next day, I'm immediately on the phone with my gynecologist in a rage. I'm explaining to her, like, I understand every pill has a side effect, which she told me was nausea, vomiting, headaches, you know, the normal. But to that extent of having psychological induced issues because of this pill, you did not make me aware of that before I made a decision to take these pills. So she was fired, needless to say. And at that point, I had no trust in the medical community. I didn't even want to take a Tylenol for a headache. And even to this day, I'm still affected by that. I will not take a Tylenol. I will suffer and thug a, t a headache the fuck out. I'm telling you. That's how much faith in the medical community I have slash had. So since my faith in Western medicine was completely shot, I started looking into home homeopathic remedies and homeopathic physicians and naturalists that could assist me and aid me in healing my body and to recover from this um, hormonal change. So I found this physician and she was God sent. She confirmed everything that I have read on the internet which most Western physicians were reluctant to do that because, you know, every time they write a prescription, they're making money. They don't really believe in, 
and natural healing. So when I found this physician, I just felt like she was sent from God up above to heal me in this journey. And I was so relieved. And what she explained to me that was happening to my body was everything that I had read for myself on the internet. She just put that stamp on it like, yes, this is legit. This is what is happening to you. And I was just like a burden was lifted off of my chest. So how she explained it to me is that when you're taking any hormonal contraception, it's going to naturally alter your hormones in your body and throw everything completely out of whack. Um, birth control pills are man-made. They're synthetic hormones, therefore making them unsafe and unnatural for your body to adjust to. And the symptoms that I was experiencing are similar to the symptoms when women are going through menopause. They're experiencing a lot of these same symptoms. So by me taking these synthetic hormones, I was um, inducing my body into menopause. And that's how it was explained to me from this physician. And it made so much sense. And I'm sure a lot of women that are out there that follow me, they can relate because they are women of a particular age in their 50s and 60s who have gone through menopause. And some probably have felt a lot of these symptoms, you know, the anxiety, the depression, um, the panic attacks, the night sweats, cold sweats, whatever you want to call it. And once again, that's because you're going through menopause and you're going through a hormonal change. So by me taking those birth control pills, I was going through a hormonal change as well, causing the exact same symptoms. But the only difference is when you're induced into early menopause, it's reversible. So it wasn't something that is supposed to happen. It's something that could happen and they don't explain that to you because you're taking a man-made synthetic hormone, it's throwing all of your hormones out of whack, causing these crazy unexplained symptoms and possibly even death. So the physician that I found, um, the treatment wasn't really anything vigorous or extensive. I could have really done it myself, but just to have that support and just to have that, um, that expertise assistance, it was much needed. So the only thing that she treated me, she treated not only my physical symptoms, but she healed the complete person, the mind, body, and the soul. And I thought that was just, that's a great way. I think that's how all physicians should approach um, treatment. But anyways, I began drinking detox, detox teas. I went on a raw vegetable diet. I began juicing. Um, I was taking vitamin supplements. You know, things that I could have really did myself, but that's how I healed my body. And I knew that each day I was feeling better and better and better. It was a very slow, gradual process, but eventually there was light at the end of that tunnel. So I would say it took me about eight months of dealing with this to be completely healed. All of my symptoms subsided. There were no more anxiety attacks, no more racing heartbeats, no more feeling weird, no more feeling down. Like Everything was completely back to normal as if it never happened. And that birth control brand, which is called Yaz, Y-A-Z, when I was doing my research back then, there were so many lawsuits for this pill. So many women have passed away from taking that pill. So many women did not recover like I recovered and still feel after effects, still have anxiety disorders, depression, any type of psychological issue that rooted from taking that pill. A lot of women did not heal from that. And it's unfortunate because I felt that they were just brushed off like I was from the medical community because you know they couldn't find anything wrong with you. They're gonna put it down to being psychological and then they look at you crazy and that's when that stigmatism comes in. So it's unfortunate for a lot of women that did not get the help that they needed, but that birth control pill did have a lot of lawsuits and it's just not that brand. Just any man-made synthetic hormone is not natural and it's not good for your body. So if you have daughters and nieces or 
you know, anyone in the childbearing age, please pass this message along. Do not take synthetic hormones. I know there are contraceptives out there that do not have synthetic hormones in them. So you just got to do your research and hopefully you can find a good physician out there that is willing to listen to your concerns and take you serious. And since this experience, it really changed the way that I have an outlook on my own health and my own life. Like I said earlier, I don't even take Tylenol pills to this day. I don't eat red meat. I still juice. You know, I'm very alert as to what I put in my body. I don't eat out a lot. If I do, it's once in a while. It's celebratory. It's not like, you know, I'm just going to eat out. But I'll eat out an occasional Friday here and there, but I'm not a big restaurant type of person. I like to cook at home. I like to know what I'm putting in my foods because a lot of things that we put in our body could have adverse reactions and are unexplained and could be explained, you know, for a lot of symptoms that we may have. So, you know, I guess it was a gift and a curse because it led me to this healthy lifestyle that I've been trying to maintain. Yeah, I do have temptations and you do want to, you know, I don't say completely cut things off. I say everything in moderation. You know, I think moderation is key to a lot of things that we do in life because too much of something is not good, but too little of something is not good either. And that experience also tailored the way that I would treat my kids whenever they came down with the sickness. You know, I'm more of a naturalist, so I never gave them like cough medicine, none of that stuff, because that stuff is not good for your bodies either. You know, I would give them tea, honey, lemon, ginger, turmeric. That's how I treated my kids um, when they had colds and they were little and even throughout their teenage years. I've always had that same approach. And it has worked. So you guys would be surprised of the healing that food and natural remedies can have on your body. And it's so much healthier and it's so much better for you than taking these man-made products. And just because I don't take a Tylenol when I have a migraine, yeah, I'm going to thug it out. But I'm not just sitting there in pain. There's other ways that will cure Um, a migraine. You can Google it. You can YouTube a lot of videos that will show you how to get rid of a headache, you know, take a nice hot shower, do some massaging on your neck, on your back. There's a lot of things that cause headaches and you just have to find um, out what it is. A lot of headaches are tension headaches that come from stress, but there are a lot of techniques that you can do naturally um, to subside that headache. But I can go on and on and talk about this. But I say all this to say, and the point of the video is to be an advocate for your own health. Take matters into your own hands. Because a lot of times, the medical community, they will brush you off when you're having you know, symptoms that they can't diagnose and that they can't explain. They will brush everything off to stress and anxiety. you know, And then they will just go to subscribing things that will cause one problem, and make it even bigger and then have to prescribe another pill for that problem. So just be your own advocate for your health. Don't give up on yourself. Don't settle. If you're not comfortable with a diagnosis, do your research. Get a second, third, fourth, 20, a 20th opinion. You know, whatever it takes until you feel comfortable um, with the results. So 13 years later, here we are today, I have not had an anxiety attack or any of those weird symptoms that I had 13 years ago um, since that incident happened and since I was healed. So this is something that was definitely induced by a medication that was prescribed to me. So I hope you guys can pass this message along to the young queens in your life. I hope you found it very informative and I hope it's something that you can take away and have a different outlook on, you know, the way that we're treated medically. I'm not here to diagnose or to give any medical advice, but just to share my experience with you. And hopefully it'll be helpful out there to someone that's listening and that may be going through something. And also I could not have done this without the support system that I have in my life. So shout out to my husband and shout out to my parents. They were a great support system. And of course, you know, your kids are always your motivation to keep moving forward in tough times. So I'm really grateful 
for them as well. Well, if you made it this far in the video, I thank you for listening and thank you for watching. If you are not subscribed to my channel, become a part of the Nikki gang. Bang on that subscribe. We will have more transparent moments like this in the hopes of it helping and reaching someone out there that really needs to hear the message. All right. So be sure to leave a comment down below. Give this video a big thumbs up and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for joining me. Bye. Get the brief, then it's adios. If I'm with the trees, then she give it though. Yeah. When I see police, then we get low. That's when another piece, that's another.